Let's start today's show with a very controversial topic. Savers are losers. And saving to secure your financial future is really such an outdated way of thinking. But before you guys get upset, because you guys have gotten upset about this in the past, let me help you understand why. The U.S. dollar basically has no value whatsoever. And like Robert has mentioned, cash is trash. And this all happened in 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. For some of you, this is not new information. If you've watched our podcast in the past, then you've probably heard this a million times and it's ingrained in your brain by this point. The U.S. dollar was literally backed by physical gold and silver. And now it's just a fiat currency backed entirely by the full faith and trust in our government. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't have full faith and trust in our government. (laughs) So what was once a silver certificate now is just a Federal Reserve note, an IOU from the U.S. government. What was once an asset has now become a liability. And as a result, the U.S. to this day is the largest debtor nation in history. Look around. Prices are increasing everywhere. So here's an example, and I want to make this relatable to you guys and easy. If you would have earned $5 a couple of years ago, right, you would have gone really happy with your $5 to your favorite coffee shop, and you would have gotten your croissant with your coffee and maybe some almond milk or oat milk in it, right? And you would have paid for that, and your $5 would have sufficed. But now that same coffee and croissant is worth $15, and your $5 gets you nothing. (laughs) So guys, basically the dollar is no longer valuable when it's being saved and sitting. Every day it's losing value. Every day it's worth less. And prices just keep increasing. So you have to keep your money moving. But the question is how? I'm your host, Alexandra gonzalez Ganoza, And this is where your financial freedom begins. After 1971, The dollar was no longer money. Most people have no idea this even happened, why it happened, or how it impacts them as savers. That's what makes savers losers. And that's probably why people keep blindly saving their money. Let's evaluate history really quickly, because it'll be a lot easier to understand why 1971 is such an important year. After World War I, Germany's monetary system completely collapsed. And there were a lot of reasons this happened, but one of them was because the German government was allowed to print all the money they wanted. The flood of money that resulted caused uncontrollable inflation. Back then, their currency was called marks. And so there were more marks floating around, um, but people were buying less and less. In 1913, a pair of shoes cost 13 marks, right? To put this into perspective. And then just 10 years later, by 1923, that same pair of shoes was 32 trillion trillion marks. Does this sound familiar to you guys? Because it's happening right now in the U.S. And it helps put your coffee and croissant into a little bit of perspective, right? As inflation kept increasing back then, the savings of the middle class was completely depleted and just wiped out. Obviously, panic arised. And with their savings gone, the middle class demanded new leadership, which unfortunately was when Adolf Hitler was elected in 1933. And as we know, then World War II happened. When World War II was ending, the Bretton Woods system was put in place to stabilize the world's currencies. And you've probably heard Robert talk about this like several times before as well. This was a quasi gold standard. It meant currencies were backed by gold, and the system worked just fine until the 1960s when the U.S. began importing Volkswagens from Germany and Toyotas from Japan. Suddenly, the U.S. was importing more than it was exporting, and gold was leaving our country. So in order to stop the loss of gold, President Nixon ended the Bretton Woods system in 1971, And the U.S. dollar replaced gold as the world's currency. Never in the history of the world had one nation's fiat currency been the world's money. So 
now that we had our mini lesson, history lesson here, let's also take a look at the three reasons why you shouldn't save money, especially if you want to be rich. Reason number one to not save money is taxes. As Rich Dad would say, people who work hard and save money have a hard time building wealth because relatively they pay more in taxes. The government taxes savers when they earn, save, spend, and pass on their, um, their money through income tax, capital gains tax, sales tax, and estate taxes. There's a reason why the government taxes savings rather than giving them a tax break for it. The government gives tax breaks to make people do what they want them to do. Tom Realrate talks about this all the time. The tax code is basically a series of incentives for entrepreneurs and investors. Saving is not something the government really wants to encourage you to do. Because if you think about it, savings doesn't grow the economy. Debt does. Investing does. And that's because when your economy is backed by fiat money like ours, debt creates more money and more wealth for those who know how to use it. But savings doesn't. So if you're a saver, you're a loser because of taxes. Some of you get upset with the term loser, but the reality is you're losing money. There's no other way to put it. Another tax that completely destroys savers is a hidden tax called inflation. And that brings me to reason number two to not save money, inflation. So for example, $1,000, $1,000 that you worked so hard for and you worked even harder to save because saving is not easy. That is immediately eaten away by inflation. Each year, it's worth less. Each year, the interest the bank pays you is eaten away by both taxes and inflation. So the government takes 30% of the interest earnings through capital gains taxes, and inflation eats away at almost all the rest, or probably even more. So the $1,000 you saved 50 years ago would be worth around $130 today. Now add taxes to that, which leaves you in the negative when it comes to the purchasing power of your dollars when you're a saver. That's why Rich Dad teaches that working hard and saving money is a hard, if not impossible, way to get rich. So basically, taxes and inflation is what makes savers losers in today's economy, right? So now let's talk about the third reason to not save money, avoiding risk. I know this is ironic because for some, saving sounds like the safe option, but when you work hard to save money, you place your security in those savings. If you have this mentality and you spent all this energy saving your money, then it's probably really hard for you to even fathom investing because you have this fear of losing all your hard-earned money. Instead of thinking, how can I grow my money exponentially through investing, you're deciding to go the safe route. And everyone needs to do what they're comfortable with, but you need to be aware of the consequences. Today, we went through a short little history lesson, and we learned that saving is not safe and that you're actually literally losing your money this way. In fact, saving is actually the riskiest way to use your money because of what we covered earlier, because of taxes, because of inflation, the losing of your purchasing power, and so on. In a fiat money system, the benefits go to those who take risks and invest based on debt to create more fiat money. It's what keeps the economy stimulated. The system we have today doesn't reward hoarders. It doesn't reward savers. The whole point of the fiat money system is to create more wealth through debt. People always say, follow the money, right? Well, the government gives incentives through taxes to the risk takers. If the government wants more housing, they'll reward those who invest in properties. They want more jobs. They incentivize people who take the risk to create a business to employ others and create those jobs. If they want more green energy, they reward people investing in that energy. It's not about taxing the rich like we here lately. It's about giving them incentives to create a more abundant economy, to motivate the risk takers and the innovators. Saving is counter to this. 
That is why the government makes it hard to save money and get rich. If they really wanted this, they'd make it easier to do it through their policies, but they don't. Think about it. What does saving actually contribute to our society? Nothing. At the end of the day, I know some of you save to prepare for retirement, but of all, a lot of us know that saving itself isn't enough to, pre um, to prepare or to secure your retirement. And I imagine that's probably why you're listening to this podcast today. This is especially true for the younger generations that will never see a pension from their employer. And that's a whole other episode for another day. <laughs> Times have changed. So our reality has changed. Today, in order to survive and not just survive, but also truly enjoy life, we need to invest for a secure retirement. And so since our school system doesn't teach us this, at Rich Dad, we'll continue to nurture you with all the tools you need to become financially educated so you can learn to invest and keep your money moving and multiplying. This is something that the wealthy have done for generations. My parents taught me to have this mentality. A couple of years ago, I invested my money and debt into a property that, that's giving me passive income every month. And once you do the first deal, you realize it's a lot easier to multiply your wealth than it is to work for a paycheck and save that money. I learned to become an investor and think like an entrepreneur because of my parents and because of Rich Dad and the philosophy we teach here. I learned to keep my money moving, so I invested it in a property, and I learned to make money work for me, so I started my business, and I'm constantly investing in my business to keep it growing. The plus side to all of this is that not only do I get my freedom and get to enjoy the life I've designed, but I also get all the tax benefits that come with it. You'll become far wealthier if you learn to be an investor, regardless of what you do to earn money along the way. The rules have changed. In today's digital age, you need a greater level of financial education. What kind of life you live and how much money you make is really entirely up to you. Whatever we focus on grows. So if you invest your time and energy in your financial education, it'll grow and so will your wealth. And by the way, even though I just explained all the reasons savings is bad, I actually do believe it's important to have liquid assets on hand just in case hard times were to come. You should a good rule of thumb to follow is that you should always have six months worth of living expenses available in case anything were to happen. Instead of keeping this amount in cash, keep it in liquid assets like gold and silver, because these can be um, quickly converted into cash if you were to need it, and they don't diminish in value like our currency does. But you can't count your savings as part of your investing or retirement plan. It should only be there for the rainy days should it come. So when we say savers are losers, it's because we live in an inflationary economy. Cash loses value over time. And so it makes no sense to save for a secure financial future. On the other hand, assets rise and fall in value relative to inflation. If you want to thrive financially, you have to learn how to identify the right investments for your money to flow into and how to find assets that create cash flow. Outside of your emergency savings fund that we just talked about, if you're going to save money, set the money aside specifically for investing. At Rich Dad, we call this the pay yourself first. You should treat your savings for investing not as part of your asset column, but instead as part of your expense column on your balance sheet. It is your most important expense, more than any other expense, and it needs to be your number one priority. As you save your money for investing, you should also work on identifying the right asset you want to invest in that will produce cash flow at the right return. This could be real estate, a business, or technical stock trading, whatever you're interested in. And to do this, you need financial intelligence, which not only means investing money into your education or the asset, but also the biggest cost, which is your time. The most successful people always invest in their mind, body, spirit, and wealth. 
And you need to prioritize this time just like you would when taking care of your body and going to the gym or your skin and investing in skincare. Financial education also means investing in your financial tools and your financial knowledge. And as you grow in your financial knowledge, you'll also grow in the confidence that you can tackle any finance challenge that comes your way. More money means more problems, but these are good problems to have. After investing, I started to deal with bigger numbers and larger issues, but the payoff is worth it. So after listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, I hope you have the desire to stop being a saver and instead have your money work for you. And if that's what you're thinking and that's where your head's at, I suggest you get advice from people who practice what they preach and are actually successful. Don't turn to a financial planner for education because you'll probably just get a sales pitch instead. Your focus needs to be to get your own financial education. Start learning and take action. Whether it's $100 or $1,000, you've got to put some money in the game and you need to get started. When Robert and Kim Kiyosaki began investing, they started with one ounce silver coins, then invested in a property that gave them just $25 of cash flow. They started off small. I started off investing in silver, then penny stocks. And I lost, you know, at that time what I considered to be a lot of money. But it increased my knowledge. And then I started um, actually attending high ticket events to learn and make connections. This is what got me to get my first property and increase my cash, my monthly cash flow. There's a reason why the most successful people I've met invest from a thousand to a hundred thousand dollars in just masterminds alone. It's the power of association. Who you're surrounded by and what you fuel your brain with will determine your behavior and your habits and then your reality. It doesn't matter how much money you have, what matters is what you do with it and how you control it. So start, start small, but start and start today. Thank you guys so much for watching today's Millennial Money or listening to it on Spotify or wherever you're listening to it. Please give it a five-star review. It's what lets us keep creating this kind of content for you guys to continue educating you guys and continue creating this um, community that we have. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next episode. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.